Plus, Gallo's only played two games, right? Mm -hmm. So, three. Well, I think third you missed one. that game. It was a weekend game. So you I was off that day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you're right, he's only played two. <laughs> Make up your mind. No, you didn't get it. <laughs> But the idea that you guys could basically grind this game out I and mean, look like it was might get away from yeah, it. Yeah, it was a good win. Team? It was a really good win for the team because we didn't, you can see all game, like other than the beginning of the game when we had all cylinders going. Uh, we kind of lost our steam there in the middle of the first. Really never got it back until the last three minutes of the game. Uh, we were good enough offensively to like kind of hang in the game. Uh, and then, you know, last three minutes we got stops. Uh, Came out of a timeout, got a three uh, with execution, you know. Um, so for a new team, that's really nice to see at the end of a game. There's three minutes left. You were down by four. When you called timeout, what did you say to the players? Well, I didn't really. It was more about the play we were running. And, you know, with the new rules, you lose a timeout after, you know, three. So the reason we called it was because... We had 14 seconds, we had an extra timeout. That allowed us to call the timeout and draw up a play. Uh, and, you know, we were looking for three things. We were looking for Tobias on the cut, uh, Lou on the dribble penetration, or Gal for the three, and it ended up being the third option, uh, which to me, from a coaching standpoint, it means more, because we went through two options and didn't check down to the third. Uh, a team that hasn't really worked on anything, uh, that, that was very, very good. Uh, great composure. How did you like what DJ did? The, the, the uh, jump ball and tips it off at Dom? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, Avery, I, was, I, I couldn't run or yell loud enough, you know, because right, he could have just dribbled out the clock. You know, the game's over. But most people would have laid it in, too. You could see him actually thinking about it. He said he couldn't find the, uh, the, the score. He just, you know, so he just laid it in. But it was a smart play because with no time on it, with uh, four seconds left, and very difficult, even if they had a got it uh, to come down and make a three. Doc, you talked about this after the trade with uh, Avery and the energy that he brings defensively, and you, he showed that tonight in the yeah, last three minutes. He, he was huge. He did it twice, like in the second quarter, JJ got it going. JJ Barrera was killing us. We bring Avery in, and it, it stopped immediately. Those last two hustle plays that Avery made by running a guy down and getting deflections, there's three or four guys in the league that would have done that, and Avery's one of them. And that, to me, that saved the game. Uh, there's so many times you you see so many games where guys give up on the play. They think the guy has a breakaway. They allow him to have it, and Avery just stayed in there. He just, you know, from behind. Those are two where he came from behind and got those, and uh, that's why he's the defensive player that he is. He, he never gives up on the play. Coach, you talked a little bit about the final push towards playoffs, and you guys aren't coming back home till. End of the month against the Rockets. Yeah. Uh, long road trip and the difference between ninth place and I want to say fifth place is three and a half games. Yeah, it's close and every game counts. Like, uh, you know, today this felt like a steal game because we didn't play well and they shot the heck out of the ball. And when you can steal a game like this, uh, you, you feel like you put two in the, in the win column for yourself. So, and plus, uh, we're going out on the road now. and. I actually think it's good. We'll find out a lot about ourselves. You know, um, you know. I think it, it gives us a, a chance to kind of grow together, uh, bond together. So, uh, you know, and, and and we have three days to prepare for it. So I think that's good. All good for us. Doc, you, you changed the the second unit uh, rotation by taking both Gallo and uh, Tobias out. Yeah. What did you like from that second unit? I just wanted energy. I felt like it was a game where we were flat. You know, and you could see it. So I thought Sam gave us a lift. You know, there'll be nights nice where Sam will play. It'll be nice where he won't play, but he has to be ready to play every night. I thought uh, he was ready to play tonight. That was important for us. He had a couple of threes, too. Yeah. Yeah, we will. <laughs> that, that's all bonus. <laughs> we'll take those for sure. You know, why, the fact that he was willing to shoot them is always nice. Why has he had such a struggle? I know he's worried about over the course of the season. He's worried about not making him in the games after making him in practice. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know the answer. You know, he, he's, to me, he's more of a slasher anyway. Uh, you know, career-wise, he's been a slasher. He's never been a knockdown three-point shooter, you know, even in college. Uh, but what he does do, he plays with great energy. He, he attacks the basket, and that's what you need him to do. So have you ever had the unknown to take this team to kind of jail, considering that you no, got two um, players, guys coming in out of the I, I really don't. I don't think anyone ever knows, you know. Sometimes you get off to great starts with a team, 
and then uh, you go through some struggles and it falls apart, you know, and then you got to get, you know, it's just going to take time. Uh, we still, you know, Austin is still out, so we need one more guy back. Hopefully he can come back and get in the mix. You know, we needed an extra guard tonight a lot with the way they were attacking. I thought what Rick did was really smart. He knew we didn't have a lot of guards, so he played three guards the whole night. Uh, and, 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 you know, it made us struggle a little bit. We, we literally didn't have enough guys to guard their guys, and, and that was hard. Coach, down 10 at one point in the fourth quarter, what does the comeback win say tonight about the team's resiliency and mental toughness? It's, it's what we've been all year, and what's amazing with this group, we keep changing our team, and we've still been resilient, you know, so it says a lot about the character of the team. You know, I like the conversation and the timeouts, you know, uh, you know, always give them a second. When you walk in, you could you could hear the, the positive talk. Like, let's get this. Uh, we'll find you know everybody. We got plenty of time. No one was in there panic, uh, other than Sam Cassell because he's panicked all the time. Uh, but no, none of the players were panicked. You know, we were all good, and it was good. Is this the kind of role that you envision for Gallinari with the way that this current team is made up? Yeah, him yeah, and Tobias. You know, uh, Lou. You know, those are three guys that can put the ball in the basket, and so. You know, we have more scores in, in, in certain ways, and so it's been good for us. I love seeing Gal that's aggressive. Uh, it's, it's great for us. Guys, can I go? You guys got any questions? Otherwise, they can't ask anything, but you, you have one. Uh, Tobias struggled a little bit through the ninth. Yeah. How is that his ability there? Been able to help him space yeah, he's a great shooter, you know, and even great shooters miss. <laughs> Tobias missed a lot of great shots, you know, shots at the basket. and. You know, it's funny, like, uh, you can tell he's a way better than an average player. Most average players miss shots like that, they stop shooting. Uh, you know, I told Tobias one at a time, I was keep shooting, he was like, oh, I am. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, I love that. I mean, that tells you who he, who he is and who he can be. Thanks, guys.